What's up everybody, it's Luke here at Sky Guy Customs and today we are going to be building a clone trooper helmet and doing a quick update on the shop in general. I was looking at the channel here today and uh, I don't come on here that often and I realized I should be because the Rex video has over 8,000 views now. That's incredible. So I just wanna say thank you all so much for your support on that. That's been super cool to see. And as much as you guys love it, as much as I loved it when I made it, I know that that build was not perfect by any means. And there's a lot of stuff that we can do to improve it. Um, just over time since that Rex build, I've learned a lot of new techniques, just been practicing a lot more. And so today with this new clone that I'm working on, I wanna show you guys a whole different way to go about the same sort of weathering, the same sort of design, um, and just kinda, kinda update the whole look. So without further ado, let's take a look at the backroom printers here and what's going on in here, and then we'll head out to the shop and see what we're working on today. One of the big projects that I'm working on right now is a full suit of Mando armor for a customer. They're ordering Din Djarin's full suit, just custom painted in black, white, and gray. Uh, so here you can see one of the shoulder pauldrons that just printed up, it looks super clean. Uh, and then over here on the other printer, we've got the, the chest plate going right now. So this is the upper half of the chest plate. The little diamond in the center just prints along with it, so you don't have to worry about attaching that. Uh, and that's cranking along. Looks like it's about 70% of the way done there. and Should be done in a couple hours. As I was going through the back room here and checking out the printers, I stumbled upon this box of just all of these old prints that I never really did anything with. So I just want to show you guys what is in there uh, and take a look at some of these unfinished projects. Maybe I'll get to work on them, make, make something out of them in the future. First and foremost though, I gotta show you the other shoulder pauldron. This one just finished printing up too. It's got the mud horn signet on it there. This thing just looks so incredibly clean. I love the way that that turned out. I don't know if that's focusing. There we go. I got these files off Thingiverse. Um, I'll link the maker down below. Super great files, really used minimal supports to print this thing out. Took like 20 hours with 7% infill uh, and it's super durable. And that mud horn signet just looks freaking awesome. I've got some of the first pieces I ever printed on my first uh, Mando build. You can see these were done on an Ender 3 Pro. So I had to slice it into pieces, uh, which I then soldered together, but you can still see the weld lines pretty evident right there. Um, all in all, really happy with how this turned out. Initially, I just did like a black wash, didn't know what airbrushing was, what overspray with a rattle can was, anything like that. But for, for a first build, I think both of these pieces turned out really, really cool. There's a shoulder pauldron that I painted up the same way. This is also back when I was painting silver um, weathering over the top. I didn't have any sort of toothpaste or covering to lay a base coat of silver and then chip away at it. So this is all done over the top of the blue and the purple paint. Also included in the box are a couple of pieces that I modeled and then printed myself. This is a Corporal Echo Arm based on his look in Bad Batch Season 1. When I was first learning how to use Fusion 360, this is one of the first pieces I made. It's got his comm link here, uh, and then it's sort of that kind of oval shape down the center, not quite circular. You can see here though, I overshot how long it should be, so I had to trim off a good chunk of it and then try to smooth that back down. Just all part of the learning curve with modeling. Not something I've done in a while, but I definitely want to get back into modeling soon. So hoping to start making more pieces like this and cleaning them up. I also found some of the first pieces I ever printed for my clone build. Got a little carried away when I started working on this and decided I was just going to print right away without measuring. Not something I recommend at all. Absolutely measure first before you print anything with any sort of armor uh, related build, a helmet, whatever it may be. Anything that is going on your body or any piece that has to fit into another piece, you gotta measure first. You gotta make sure that that's scaled correctly because otherwise you're gonna get a hand plate that covers basically your entire hand and is almost an inch wider than your wrist or you'll get a bicep that no matter how hard you try is just way too big for you. Definitely recommend sizing pieces before you print them. You're gonna save yourself time, you're gonna save yourself filament, and a lot, a lot of hassle. The box also has a couple clone pieces that are sized correctly, namely this beautiful thigh plate. It goes around my upper leg and fits super well. And this season four clone forearm guard with a comm link built in and everything. These pieces do fit me, 
However, I'm not using them intentionally and we're going to go out to the shop and I'll show you why. Unfortunately, the massive overhead light in the shop just decided to crap out on me. So we're going to be working with a little bit less light today, but that's okay. I mean, this guy's doing a great job, but this thing should be turning on too. And it's not. So you can see the printers in here. Blue Leader over here is working on Haunted's Clone Trooper Clay. Uh, I'm working on a project for his Clay 2Y uh, event that's going on, so check that out on Instagram. I'll link it in the description of this video. Over here on Red Leader, we've got the Foreman by Alter Ego Armory. That's all printed and ready to get sanded. That one's gonna go out ready to paint. So just sand it up, I'll put a coat of primer on it, and ship it out. Green Leader has a clog currently. I gotta fix that and throw a new nozzle on him, uh, which is what these cases down here are for. And then Gold Leader is just waiting for a new project. One other thing I do want to mention really quick before we get into the main build today is how important the right type of filament for your printer is. Hatchbox was having a sale last week and I love their products. I buy from them all the time, pretty much exclusively. They were out of white. I usually get 1.75 millimeter PLA white filament. They were out of that. They were sold out. So instead I opted for this matte gray 1.75 millimeter PLA. Not the same at all. You would think the color wouldn't change it that much, but right out of the box, you can feel this texture difference. It feels really, really grainy. It's super brittle, and it just feels really, really weak on the whole. So word of caution, matte versus gloss, all of that stuff does affect the way that your printer prints. This stuff will work way better if you print at about 220. Even then, you're gonna get a lot of stringing, constant weakness in the prints, and 7% infill was way too little for this. They would just crumble in my hands. On that note, stick to the classics. 1.75 millimeter, white PLA. This stuff will never fail you. Print at 200 degrees Celsius. It's gonna crank out any print you need. All right, workbench is an absolute mess, but I wanna give you guys a rundown of what's going on up here. Printed out the head of a B1 battle droid not too long ago. Love the way this thing looks. Really wanna finish him up. This is a model that you can find on Etsy. I can also link this in the description to build a full-size battle droid. Don't know if I'll have time to do this over the summer, but it would be a really, really cool project. Also going on, got the other thigh plate for Mando's, the phase one or season one look. Um, with that kind of dirtied up thigh plate. And then we've got the meat of the project, the clone build that I've been working on. So all the pieces except the helmet are finished up right now, and now I've been working on the rigging. So getting all of these things uh, hooked up. I've got elastic straps that I just hot glued in, and then they've got little button clasps that uh, I use to attach the pieces together. So in this case, back of the thigh plate to the front. All right, but this is just way too big a mess, so let's clean it up a bit. All right, that is much more like it. We got the shop all cleaned up, workspace is empty, ready to go, and here in the heart of the action is Clone Trooper that we're working on today. This is a Folky Patrol Phase 2 Clone Trooper. I'll put the link to this file in the description. You can get these files on Etsy, Folky Patrol, Awesome, awesome files. These fit perfectly. I printed this one in three pieces, the dome, the back, and the front at 94% scale, uh, and it slides on and off. Don't even need padding, really. Obviously, I'll put some in, but it fits super snug, looks great. I love it. Now I'm kicking myself because I didn't think to film working on the armor itself sooner or else I would have done all that and showed you guys that as well. However, I hope that picking up from here and showing you the most of making the helmet will be enough. But I've got some B-roll I want to show you what the armor's looking like and why I wasn't using all those parts that I showed you that are in the back room. See, the thing about my clone trooper is I want him really, really battle damaged. Now, the reason this is sort of a part two to the Rex video is those weld lines, those classic weld lines that Rex has. I have been obsessed with those weld lines since I was a kid, and I always wanted more of them. I took my soldering iron, went to town on this clone trooper, the helmet and the armor combined, and got a little carried away with the weld lines. There's a lot of them. I don't know what the full story is here yet. Maybe he got blown up, his armor got shredded to pieces, and now he wants to rebuild it or what. You're gonna have to come up with some lore there. But I have put a ton of weld lines on this helmet and I wanna walk you guys through exactly how we can do that. 
So here you can see what I'm talking about. This helmet has the first coat of Bondo on it, as well as those weld lines. And you can see my soldering iron there to the side. I've just kind of gone all over and covered him up with these things, making it look like he has really seen some action. His helmet has been ripped to pieces on the visor. You can see it's chipped away and everything. And so once this is all sanded up, we're gonna make him look thoroughly broken. Also went to the store today and got some supplies, so let's take a look at those. First things first, we got a couple cans of paint. We got a Rust-Oleum flat white. This is gonna be the base of the helmet. Get that classic clone white, as well as a flat black. I love to use this thing. Maybe I'll use it for a base coat if I decide to give him some chipped weathering. Those kind of black highlights down below the white that show through on the seams and the creases or it'll just be used for the interior of the helmet and for weathering. In addition to that, we also got some painter's tape because I was running low on that. So we'll be able to tape up this helmet, make it look good, give it the paint job it deserves because he is going to need some blue for that classic 501st stripe that's gonna be going right down the center of the helmet. All right, so now that we've got the supplies and we know what we're working on, we're gonna take this guy outside get him sanded get him smooth so that we can paint him up and complete the armor all right so now that we're ready to start sanding the helmet let's go over what we need obviously we've got the main attraction right here the piece that we're going to be working on we've got a couple sanding sponges that i'm going to be using to actually chip away at the bondo here and start getting it smooth right now i'm using a combination of an 80 and 100 grit you don't want to use the 80 grit too much past this point this first round of bondo just because it takes a lot away. And, and if you use an 80 grit over and over again, you're just not gonna get anything smooth. It's gonna keep chipping away too much and revealing those layer lines. So after that first pass, I would say anything higher than 100 is good. I usually go up to about 220 when I'm on that last pass, trying to get everything super, super smooth. In addition, a respirator. Bondo, helpful as it is to work on helmets, is nasty stuff if you get yourself a good respirator and protect your lungs. Finally, to clean off the helmet once we've got all the Bondo off, a leaf blower. It's usually good to go back in too with a rag and get all the fine stuff that's still stuck to it, but the leaf blower will clear out most of the mess. First round of sanding step. All right, so we smoothed out that Bondo with, like I said, a 100 grit sanding sponge. You can see even here where you can see those lines definitely went harder than I should have in a couple places, but that's okay, because we have a couple passes to go. It's Rust-Oleum two-in-one filler and sandable primer. And unlike paint, it's okay if you go a little bit hard. You lay it on a little too thick, it will take longer to dry, but you don't have to worry about runs because we're sanding it all in the end. That doesn't, that's not an excuse to just absolutely coat this and waste a whole can. It just mean you don't need to skimp on this stuff. I think I might've mentioned this in my last video, but I just wanna note whenever I'm doing any sort of priming or painting, I like to use a little foam mannequin. It raises the helmet up a little bit and you get to get the underside without having to worry about sticking to whatever surface you're on. I think this was like 15 or 20 bucks on Amazon. Definitely worth picking it up. All right, first coat of primer is on. This stuff takes 15 to 30 minutes to dry. It's super freaking hot out here right now, so definitely on the shorter side, but I'm gonna go inside a few minutes and then we'll come back out here and we'll sand it up again. Gear up with your respirator, get your sanding sponges. Again, higher grit, get that, that softer feel the more layers you put on, it's gonna get it smoother and smoother. You stay at 80 or lower, and it's just gonna get really rough. You're not gonna make any progress because you're just gonna keep taking off what you're putting on. All 
All right, so we just did that second round of sanding. It's looking great. Uh, now we need to go back through and do touch up. So this is where you're going through with another round of Bondo and you're looking for those spots where layer lines or any kind of bump, crease, anything you don't want in the finished product is still looking visible. All right, I ended up going for just a full another coat of Bondo. I'm gonna save you guys another time lapse here because I know that a shitty piece of cardboard isn't the most enticing backdrop, but it's what I've got, so it's what we're working with. As I was walking around out here, I also noticed that the bench was slightly slanted. And I realized it's because this side is literally about to crumble, so that's great. It's at a level that I'm happy with in terms of smoothness. It's just about ready for a coat of primer, except first I need to go back through with some tools and clean out the weld lines, the reforge. I decided to just totally disregard the precedent I set with all of the other armor pieces. This one, I welded the lines first and then thought, now would be a good time to put on the putty that fills in anything like that. So now I need to go back through and clean those out. Once that's ready, we can start painting. All right, that is much better. The cracks look way more defined than they did before, which is exactly what we want. Whenever you're working on a project like this, this three-dimensional build, anything you can do to give it even just a tiny bit of depth adds to the perception of reality on this thing. So now we can take our flat black primer and give it a coat. All right, let's let that sit and dry. Shouldn't take very long in this heat, and then we'll come back down and start the weathering and then get the white on. Once we've got the primer fully on and dried, this is the point where I like to go in with a trusty tube of toothpaste and accent a lot of the edges of the helmet. Not so much scarring, although I'll usually do a couple little, little cracks in there. Uh, we're gonna save most of that for all the weld lines though. For this, I primarily want to go in on the edges, so anything that's protruding out from the helmet where you're most likely to get just a chip with general wear and tear over time, and just give it the tiniest tiny accent of toothpaste, because then when we cover the white, we let that dry, we wash it off, and then that reveals all this little black chip. The number one piece of advice I have here, advice that I wish I would listen to myself more often is less is more. Almost every time I think, oh, this isn't enough weathering, I need to add more. And then when I finish it up, I think, I did a little too much with that one. So just know that you can always go back, you can always add more. You can paint over, you can chip away. So start small with weathering and add more if you want it. Now to make sure that we don't get any runs or anything, this is the level that we want our first pass of our main color to look like. Now you'll notice it's not fully white. You can see a good deal of the black underneath and that's what we want because that means you didn't go too heavy. We're not gonna get any runs. Now we're gonna let this sit for probably 10 to 15 minutes and then pass it again. Now once this is dry, we can bring it inside and start taping it up to get that blue 501st stripe. In addition to the CRL, it's always good to just have a couple reference photos from online. This is a 501st grunt from the Umbra arc of the Clone War, and it gives a pretty clear look at what the helmet's gonna look like. So essentially what we need to tape up for the blue is the stripe down the chin, two really thin lines going up the sides of the visor. It's gonna bow out just a little bit here on the rim and then almost perfectly perpendicular going over the dome. And then here, now that we have the main pattern done, now I'm just blocking in the rest of the helmet with tape, and I'm going to show you a trick for saving some tape. You can take an old plastic shopping bag, 
and just put the helmet inside of this. And then we can tape this around the exposed parts. And then you don't have to worry about as many seams and you don't have to worry about the helmet getting glued. So now before we put the blue on, I'm gonna add a little bit more toothpaste. For the blue on the clone, I am using a Rust-Oleum double coverage gloss deep blue. It is glossy, like I said before though. At the end when we put on the clear coat, that's all gonna go away. It's all gonna be matte like it should be. I know deep blue is a little bit darker than what I've seen some other folks use for 501st grunts, but in all honesty, I just love the way it looks, so that's what I'm gonna use. While the paint on the main helmet dries, I'm also working on the little greaves for this one. Um, so I started with white, even though they're primarily black. I'm gonna go over this central dot with toothpaste on both of them, and then cover the whole thing in black, and that way we won't have to paint anything by hand. It'll look a lot cleaner. It's time to take the tape off. There may be a couple spots where the paint isn't quite even. Um, all of that is gonna get touched up in the end, though, as I do some hand painting to finish up some of the details as well as hit it with some rough sandpaper to make it look even more scratched. All right, and here is a look at the helmet post removing the tape. Definitely some spots to work on. A little bit of overspray over here, a little bit of white showing through up there by the fin. All in all though, it looks super clean. So I'm gonna go take off the toothpaste and then meet back up with you. All right, it's the next day. Helmet is dried. Let's talk about weld lines. My big problem with the first Rex build I did was the way the weld lines turned out. I didn't love the finished product and I think that that's because I didn't emphasize them enough. I kept them fairly small and really, really went in on the dark brown and orange background, but for the animated look, that's just not what you need. So to really accent the animated nature of this, this time I'm focusing on a bright orange base and then a light blue accent within a white line down the center. And that should help give it sort of just that more cartoonish pop. And as I've done on other pieces, I'm not worrying so much this time around about getting the lines exactly thin or straight or anything like that. I really want them to pop and if they're bleeding out into other areas, that's honestly better because it, it looks like there is just sort of that, that unhinged weld. So that's what we're going for. Now, to make these lines actually happen, we need a couple of things. First, as I mentioned, a bright orange base. In this case, I'm using a satin rustic orange. On top of that, we're then going to use Oasis Blue paint. Uh, and these two are a great combo that really, really give it that popped, welded look. And to add these onto the helmet, I'm just going to be using a couple of foam paint brushes. I can link those down in the description below. Just got them off Amazon for a couple of dollars. And so I'm going to be spraying each of these paints onto a piece of cardboard, getting a little pool of it, and then dabbing that brush along all of the weld lines that we've made within the helmet to really, really accent those grooves. While we're at it, I also went up ahead and taped the mouth of the helmet just because I like the way it looks when we've got more colors in there. It helps me see the design a little bit better. Here you can see the space I'm working with. Clearly already some dots where I've been welding on the lines for the other pieces of armor. I'm just gonna come over here, grab a little seat, and we'll get to work. Now, the goal here is to use a really simple procedure to get a design that looks really complex. I also don't want to overshadow the 501st design that's already on the helmet, so in a few areas I'm going to be going a little bit thinner with the lines, accenting the weld lines for sure in a couple other areas, but where there's a couple cracks that branch out from each other, I want to keep those a little bit thinner so that it doesn't look like one giant blob. Alright, those teeth got the paint that they needed, got the gray in there, it's looking a lot better, definitely coming together as a whole. Now let's go down to the ground and start painting on these weld lines.
So in doing this with the rest of the armor, I found that if you go over all of the weld lines that you're gonna put on with the orange first, that gives it enough of a time to dry that you can then go back through with blue. So we're gonna start by laying a base coat of orange on all of the weld lines. All right, the orange is on. That first base is looking really good. Once this is dry, we're gonna go back through and add in the light blue. Let's do it all over again. All right, so the blue is on. It looks a lot better with both colors on. You think we'd be done, but we're not because now we have to go inside and paint by hand the signature little accent that goes in the middle, that bright white line that really makes it look like it's been forged together. So we're gonna go do that, spend a while more doing that. Well, like I said, it's day two, we're back in the back room, and would you look at that, the chest plate of the Mando just finished up. It's really nice because now we can come back here, turn off the power box, and hopefully have a lot less background noise. Huh. <sighs> It's done. At least the weld lines are. I painted on all of the white, so now it really accents that blue-orange combo. That was like two and a half hours of continuous painting, but we're done. Now we just need to paint inside the tooth grows, this bottom grebe on the chin here, and the ears. Now we can put the greaves in the vents, weather it up, put in the visor, it'll be good to go. All right, so I finished up painting all the little details. I put black in between the tooth grove, so all of that's looking good. Gave it a little bit more depth. Also painted black the uh, chin grebe that acts as sort of vent. Um, added in the stripes on both sides. And then there's one less stripe on this side. You can kind of make out that sixth one behind the forge there, as well as painted the ear caps beneath the forge. And then if, in a few spaces where there was a lot of uh, extra bondo, Kind of caking up those otherwise fine corners. I put in some brown to make it look like just a little bit of dirt accumulating over time. So now that that's all finished we're gonna hot glue in the greaves and then we're gonna get to roughing it up a little bit and weathering it. All right with those greaves all glued into place I'm going to take low grit sandpaper that's 40 grit right there that we're looking at and I'm gonna go over a bunch of areas just really light scratching to let that white show through a little bit especially on these edges get the black under the white the white under the blue weather it up all right with all of that done it's time to come back outside with our flat black primer and paint to do some weathering now with this just like toothpaste and sanding, any sort of weathering, you wanna go small at first. Start small and you can add more if you need it, but you can't take it away, or at least it's a lot harder to. Start small, accent those crevices and any corners, lines where dust would accumulate over time, and then add more as you see fit. And with that black overspray weathering all dry, I'm going out with a matte clear coat. Folks, the helmet is finished. I am so stoked with how this thing turned out. I think it's gonna look awesome with the rest of the armor complete. I really, really love the weld lines. Like I said, I've loved these things since I was little and I went all out with them. <laughs> I think it looks awesome. Let's try it on.
Thank you all so much for watching this video. Be sure to stay tuned. I'm going to be posting a video soon, suiting up in the whole suit of armor, which I really, really want you guys to see. I can't wait to put it all on and see how it looks together. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of this guy. And be sure to check me out on Instagram, at SkyGuyCustoms. It's where I post photos of all of the pieces that I work on, this helmet included. Thanks for hanging out today, and I'll see you in the next video.